Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be presenting you a card with an ECG rhythm and a scenario. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time is a rough average of the time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. At the end of the card, I'll provide you an answer and an explanation to the treatment. Good luck. Three, two, one. Let's go ahead and dive right into this one. You can see right away that this is a relatively fast rhythm. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. So when I'm identifying this rhythm, I'll first look at the QRS complex. It's very narrow and the R to R interval is nice and regular. I'm also not seeing any sort of real good P wave or T wave separation there. They're kind of jammed together into one amalgamous wave. I'm counting 20 beats there, so this is a 6 second strip, so 20 times 10, that's going to be 200 BPM. Now based on the fact that it is nice and regular, the QRS complex is narrow, and there's no real semblance of a separate P or T wave, I'm going to diagnose this as SVT. Let's take a look at the scenario and see if we can't determine whether or not this is a stable versus an unstable SVT. So we're going out for a 49 year old male, unknown medical complaint. When we arrive, he appears to be very anxious and suffering from insomnia. Denies any past medical history or history of similar. And he appears in no distress. He's alert and oriented. He denies any chest pain or shortness of breath and all vital signs are found to be stable. Now, when determining whether or not my patient is stable or unstable, I'll use the CHAD criteria. Now CHAD of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration in mental status, or dyspnea. Based on the CHAD criteria, my patient is not exhibiting any of these signs or symptoms, so I would uh, actually diagnose this patient as being in a stable SVT. Let's go ahead and take a look at the treatment. Because my patient is stable, I'm going to follow the stable SVT algorithm as laid out in contemporary ACLS guidelines. Before I get to that though, I'm going to regurgitate the mantra that you should say with every static cardiology card. Scene safe, BSI, IV, O2, monitor. At this point, I'm going to have my patient attempt a vagal maneuver, have them bear down, or hand them a 10cc syringe and instruct them to blow the plunger out. I found that this is actually a very effective method to make somebody vagal. My drug of choice here for SVT is going to be adenosine. I'm going to give six milligrams of adenosine rapid IV push, followed by at least 20 cc's of normal saline pushed at the same rapid rate. And then I'm gonna follow that up with 12 milligrams of adenosine, given the exact same way. At this point, if I were evaluating you, 
I would say that this is enough treatment and you would have passed the card. However, if you're really looking for brownie points, you could add other antidysrhythmics here. So the next choice would be something like diltiazem. Diltiazem, you'll be giving 0.25 to 0.35 milligrams per kilogram, slow IV push, and you could consider starting a drip of diltiazem at 5 milligrams per hour. Beyond that, the next drug of choice is going to be any sort of uh, beta blocker, like metoprolol, atenolol, or labetalol. We could consider also giving an anxiolytic medication, because if you remember from the scenario, the patient was anxious, and then of course they're stable, so you have time to get a 12 lead. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to check out other static cardiology videos. I encourage you to make your own playlists using these static cardiology videos to help guide your practice before you take the National Registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.